Morning. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Good to be back with you. And uh, I got the report about last week. I wish we could have been here. Uh, we were out visiting uh, family, Elaine's brother and sister in particular, who are getting older and have health issues. So we needed to go meet with them. But uh, uh, it sounded like you had a very nice uh, Sunday service last week week and we're grateful for that today of course is what sunday pentecost and we remember which person of the holy uh, oops i'm giving it away which person of the trinity the holy spirit i gave you a clue uh and we remember that god is one but exists in three persons father son and holy spirit and the Holy Spirit is given, especially to Christians, believers, uh, to empower us to do what God calls us to do, to be whom God calls us to be. And sometimes, if you feel like me, sometimes, sometimes I don't feel all that powerful. Sometimes I say things like, I wish I had a stronger faith or I wish I knew what to do, or I wish I had more strength, or I wish I was a better person. None of you have ever had thoughts like that, right? I wish I was a better Christian. Uh, you know, we remember, and today especially maybe, that it isn't us, it's the Spirit of God that enables us to do and to be what God calls us to do and to be. So let's pray right now for that Holy Spirit Pentecost power. Father in heaven, Lord, send us your spirit. Send us your power that is made perfect in weakness. Help us, Lord, to do that which we cannot do ourselves. Help us to believe that which we cannot believe in our own strength or perform in our own ability. Lord, we trust in you. We trust in your spirit. Lord, help us to live boldly in faith, dependent upon you. Help every day for us 
to be Pentecost. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand and join together for opening praise song. Come Holy Spirit. ourselves and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are our righteous sins in the home of the We have sinned against you with thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We just deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake, forgive you all your sins. Call and remain servant of the word. I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Together we affirm our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things. 
visible and invisible. And in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, the begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, the begotten not made, being the one substance of the Father, by whom all things were made, but who for us men and for our salvation. Came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended to heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again at the glory of the church that has opened the name of heaven. Whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is loved by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead. The life of the world to come. Today's psalm is Psalm 25. We read this responsibly. In you, Lord my God, I put my trust. I trust in you, God, I will be able to shame. For my hand is trying to open me. No one who hopes in you will ever be put to shame, but shame will come on those who are treacherous without cause. Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God, my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. Remember, Lord, your days are so long, for they are from home. Do not remember the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me, for you, Lord, are good. Will you not rise, the Lord? Therefore, he has taught sinners in his ways. He guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his way. All the ways of the Lord are not only faithful, but those who speak to the hands of his own. For the sake of your name, Lord, forgive my iniquity, though it is great. Remember those who fear the Lord. He will instruct them in the ways that they should. They will spend their days in prosperity, and their descendants will inherit the land. The Lord confides in those who fear him. He makes his covenant come to them. My eyes are ever on the Lord, for only he will release my feet from the snare. Please be seated. Our Old Testament reading is from the book of Numbers, chapter 11. A man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. Joshua, who had been Moses' aide since youth, said, Moses, my Lord, stop them. But Moses replied, are you jealous for my sake? I wish that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. And then from the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. This is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And then from the Gospel of John, chapter 7, we read this. 
On the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. By this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. We join together in our message song, O Holy Spirit, entereth in. invite you to uh, follow along in the message uh, outlined, uh, either on the screen or in your worship folder. As we consider our scripture readings for today, beginning with Psalm 25, which says, My eyes are ever on the Lord. On Pentecost, as always, we begin our journey with eyes ever on the Lord. And here right away, I want to point out um, the use of these absolutes or these total kind of statements that we see in our scripture readings today. You keep this in mind because sometimes we feel like maybe the Holy Spirit is for others, not for us, or that others are better in their faith or their life than we are. They're doing a better job. They're, they're, they're more important people or they're somehow more spiritual. For instance, uh, uh, the role of pastor. Well, therefore, the, the pastor, because he's the pastor, is more spiritual. Well, just check with my wife and kids and grandkids if you want to uh, disabuse that notion, shall we say. Uh, no, I'm not better. We minimize ourselves, our importance, our place, our calling, our gifts, or nerves. This morning in our uh, Bible class before the service, I was talking with Pastor John, and I love talking with Pastor John. Um, and he's got a special heart for the work and person of the Holy Spirit, right, Pastor John? And that God's people, including, guess what? The people here need to be aware of Holy Spirit power and exercise that power in faith that he gives to us. 
that he is here, he is working. And believe that and act accordingly and have attitudes and actions shaped uh, accordingly. Uh, so there are these words that we see in our scripture readings today that are inclusive. We see this um, word about uh, even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. We see this word in verse 21 of Acts in our reading, and everyone, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be, will be saved, will be, not may be, not possibly, will be saved, everyone. The message of the cross is for everyone. We begin with that total statement. God so loved whom? Some? The world. God so loved the world, everyone in it, that he gave his son, that whoever believes in him will be saved and come to knowledge of you. We begin with that message of salvation that is designed for everyone on the planet, is meant for everyone. But then the gift of the Spirit with everything that the Spirit brings, that divine spiritual power is for everyone too. And that's why we have the title of our message, Ever On, Ever In. Psalm 25 says, my eyes are ever on the Lord ever. Okay, that's our response, but it begins with what God does, not our response to it. Our eyes are ever on the Lord because his eyes are ever on us. He made us. He created us. And he redeemed us by the blood of Jesus on the cross. His eyes are on us. He works. Sometimes we don't recognize it. We don't realize it. But that doesn't mean he's not there working powerfully. Ever on, ever in. In our Old Testament reading for Numbers, chapter 11. Joshua, we read this. A man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. Joshua's response is this. Joshua had been with Moses uh, since he was a, uh, a youth, he was an aide to him, said, Moses, my Lord, stop them. And the question comes up, why stop them? And we speculate, but probably the speculation has some accuracy to it when we think, well, <clears throat> Joshua is loyal to his leader, Moses. He respects him. He loves him. He honors his place. He sees the wisdom of Moses in the face of the Israelites sometimes being stupid. And he guards jealousy, jealously Moses' position and place with people as leader, as undisputed leader. Moses' response, though, is different. He says, are you jealous for my sake? I wish that what? Now, here's that total kind of language again. I wish that how many of God's people, the Lord's people? All the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. And we add parenthetically them all, them all. So that point number one is this, the Lord's Pentecost spirit is forever on his people. And again, parenthetically, we add all, all his people. So the point of it is this, Getting back to the conversation with Pastor John, this is a small congregation here. Sometimes you may think that the Lord's spirit is rationed here, maybe because of our size, maybe because of our resources or whatever. But you need to understand that God is, his spirit is on all of you and his spirit is on this congregation. And even now, God is working his will on all of you. And here I include myself as vacancy pastor. He works in my life too. 
all of his people ever on, ever in. And so we ask the question, well, what is he doing? And why is he doing the way that he's doing it? Why, why when I pray, don't I see more? Or why uh, don't we grow more? Or why don't we have this or that resource uh, to work? You know what I see? Here's what I see. As a for instance, as a for instance, illustrating the larger point about all in. Last week, Elaine and I were not here. Last week, a man stepped up to help this congregation here. Bill stepped forward. As, as really a kind of a function of acting elder to lead this congregation. As a layman, not as a pastor, we have a particular office called pastor that we honor in the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. That is a unique uh, calling. We guard that very carefully because that's how God works in the church. He works through called and ordained servants of the word, like we say in our confession of faith and in our uh, confession of sin. But people step forward. You may notice that things are getting done around here. And you noticed last week, once again, when I wasn't here, that it was a very nice time. I got the reports. Am I right? Was that a good event last week? By the way, how many people were here last week? Okay, plus, did you get a count? We had all about 60 people here. About 60 people. So my response, and, and not all of the uh, school families were able to come. Uh, some were missing. And even so, there were more than twice as many people as we normally have here, if my math is correct, and I'm no mathematician. Do you suppose some real ministry is happening with that preschool? Do you think that there's some formative stuff going on? Uh, I overheard Diana reading something this morning, a little testimony, a little letter or note that she received from one of the parents, was it? Yeah. Okay, and, and I made you promise that you're going to share that at the end of the service, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, when she reads that little testimonial, pay attention to what she reads. And ask yourself this question, is what's happening right here in this little congregation important? Like in those children's lives? And that's just one child that she's going to read about. What about the others? What is God doing right now? Recently, we've been bragging on Diana. She graduated her current program. She's moving on to, into the four-year program uh, for early childhood education. And she's been honored. Uh, she's got straight A's. And she has a heart for this ministry. You think the Holy Spirit has something to do with that? By the way, uh, are the bills getting paid around here? Now, people say, and I've heard them say it, we don't have enough money. Wait a minute, that's not the question. Are the bills getting paid? Are they? Are the lights on? Is our organist making, you know, Thousands and thousands, millions of dollars? Yes. <laughs> but she has the talent that's as good as any out there. I always admire the hymn and song selection she gives, including on Pentecost Sunday. It's right on. I can't do, as a pastor, as good a job of hymn and song selection as Anita does. People like George light the candles, right, George? You're dedicated to this place and this ministry, you know? And you have some health issues. A lot of folks have health issues. You're still here. You're still above ground, right? Serving the Lord here, loving this place, loving this work here. I woke up again this morning, above ground. Life's good. Bev's here doing her thing as secretary. I always know I have adult supervision with Bev around. You know, she reminds me about stuff. She helps with stuff. Pastor John, I was talking to him this morning. 
about, you know, him assisting and saying, you know, we can't and we should not rely on him to be the end all and be all of pastoral service around here because he's getting older now. But I told him, I said, I cherish it when he serves me communion, like on communion Sunday, like today. I look forward to Pastor John giving me communion as my brother pastor in the Lord. And I cherish his spiritual presence like today in the Bible class when we're praying together. Okay? The offices are being exercised in this congregation and people are. They do have a vision for this place. They have a heart for this place. And they give. You give. And we need to see with the eyes of faith around here. Last week, we more than doubled attendance. There is maybe some hope for the future there about the church operation. I look around in the culture today, in the country today, in our society, and I see, I read, I hear a lot about people, parents especially, concerned about their children, about the future, about their education, about whether they're given the necessary tools in life to function as a responsible, loving adult someday. And with the questions out there about some of the issues facing people in education today, people are looking for possible alternatives or ways to supplement education for the children. That is more rounded also, teaching children values, virtues, constants, eternal constants in life, like truth, like justice, like equality, like purpose, like goodness, doing the right thing and having a standard that's eternal and unchangeable to measure that goodness. That in a world that seemingly has gone mad sometimes, that things are taught and that their children are loved and cared for as they are here in our preschool. And it's hard work to believe and to trust and to let the Holy Spirit work. Sometimes we have issues waiting on that, but we need to remember these absolutes. We see on Pentecost from Acts chapter two, again, this absolute word, this total word, all of them, not just the apostles, but also the whole house. They were all together and the Holy Spirit came on everyone, all the believers. And the quotation from Peter who stands up and in a spirit filled voice says, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. That's all. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. There's even a place for old guys like me. <laughs> and you. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. Yes, God does create mankind as man and woman. There are differences, God-given differences. And we recognize those. And there's different roles, God-given roles. Fathers are fathers, mothers are mothers. There are roles in the church, unique to the church. Having said that though, the spirit of God is for everyone. And there's no one role that has more power, or more prerogatives than another. It's all about being a servant. Jesus says, you should serve. You should wash feet just like I do. It's not a position of power to be exercised over people, but to serve them. And then of course, this total thing, this message of salvation, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And that gives us our second point here. Whoever calls on the Lord 
will be pardoned, will be pardoned. God's forgiveness is for all who call on him. All of them then receive the Holy Spirit. We all have that ever on, ever in presence of God. And then number three, I'll give you the point here first. Whoever believes in the Lord will flow with power. Power. And again, Pastor John and I talking this morning about the power of God in the Holy Spirit. Now this power, we think about this in human terms. We want to see stuff happening miraculously, powerfully. We want there to be dramatic change for the better. We want our prayers to be answered instantly. We want everything to be okay now. We want all the strength that we think we need or should have. We want that power demonstrated. God's power, the Holy Spirit, works sometimes like that, but oftentimes he works through weakness. We'll get to that. But again, this total kind of work. Whoever believes in me, Jesus says in our gospel reading from John 7, whoever believes in me. And again, this idea of the, you know, the, 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 the cross of Christ is for everybody. It's, it's like what legal people call a forensic use of the gospel. In other words, um, that there has a, there's a legal application. When Jesus died on the cross, shed his blood on the cross, that blood covers us all. God sees us and declares us innocent. We're guilty, but we're clothed in Christ's robes of righteousness. We are covered by the blood of Jesus. God has passed a legal judgment that says, my wrath has been put on my son at the cross and no longer am I judging people who believe in that cross, believe in that forgiveness. You have full pardon. That's a legal pronouncement. But then we also have this ever on, ever in reality. Our eyes are on the Lord and he is always in us and we are always in him. This is the Holy Spirit relationship of power that we see and love. And he doesn't work like we do or would want him always to do. And sometimes we get frustrated well, here we look first at the promises of the words of Jesus here in our gospel lesson. He says, whoever believes in me as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. And again, we have the Holy Spirit in us. And that has a cause and an effect of rivers of living water flowing out from us. Our lives will touch other lives because of the spirit of God within us. And sometimes in ways we do not know. Mother Teresa once said, we can't do great things. We can only do small things with great love. And sometimes that's the thing that means the most. Again, listen to what Diana is going to read at the end of the service this morning. This place is important. This place has the power of the Holy Spirit here working. I see it. And you need to believe that by faith. And God is working here. We have received the Spirit. These words, whoever, all, ever, everyone, that includes us here today, 2,000 years after the fact. And I was thinking about it, a, a, a scripture passage to kind of summarize the point here that God's Spirit is powerful and works powerfully within us, even when sometimes we don't see it the way we want to see it. And here, let's think about, I think about my own life, in history, the times I've seen God work through failure on my part, through inadequacy on my part, through shortcoming on my part, work in spite of me. It's not my power, it's his power. And the summary verse or scripture passage here that came to me is 2 Corinthians 12. When Paul is saying this in verses 7 through 10, because of these surpassingly great revelations, he's talking about how the Holy Spirit has revealed the gospel in its fullness to him and how he in turn has been an apostle for Jesus Christ and spread the gospel to thousands of people all around the Mediterranean world. This can inflate an ego 
This can make a person's head big and swollen with pride. So he's saying this, because of these surpassingly great revelations in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh. How many of us have a thorn in our flesh? We're a thorn. We can relate to Paul here. We have our weaknesses. Three times, he says, I pleaded with the Lord to take it away. Uh, take it away from me. But he said to me, and listen to this, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in what? Anybody know that word? In weakness. My power is made perfect in weakness. Why? Because then there's no kidding ourselves. This is Holy Spirit power. This is not me and my power, my goodness, my smarts, my ability, my greatness. Me, 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 me. No, this is God's power in spite of me. And that's what Paul says. My power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, Paul says, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses and in insults and in hardships and persecutions in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am what? Strong. There's nothing stronger than God's Holy Spirit power. In John 10:10, 10, 10, Jesus is talking, and he reminds us about all of this. He says, I have come that they, that you may have life and have it to the full, overflowing, powerful, living water, feeding our souls and other souls as well. Never underestimate Pentecost power. Today's the day to remember that. Now I want to finish with something here. It's a video a clip, and I thought I would show this at the end of the message uh, today. Reminder about God's power, not our own. Kind of a visual representation. Remember, Jesus tells parable, and he points to the birds of the air and the flowers of the field. We're going to do that here. And by way of illustration and how God works his mighty power, sometimes in mysterious ways, sometimes in hidden ways, sometimes patiently over a period of time, but how the power is there. Let's watch this. Big stuff. This looks significant. This is a big tap. Wow. It's more or less the same you find in your kitchen. Yeah, pretty much. A little bit large. Yeah, the outlet pipe is the last line of defense to divert disaster. An enormous relief valve for the dam. The end of this long pipe, there's the valve right down there. That's the one the water ultimately comes out. At the moment this is dry, water's up to there. Okay, right, we'll better begin the process. Herod, are we ready? Where do we stand when this happens? We trust the hearings, not the angels. Ten. Nine, eight, seven, six. This is fun. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh. That is the effect. 190 meters of water pressure bearing down on the water at the bottom, pouring out 20,000 liters a second, traveling at 50 meters per second. That's the effect of that pressure turned into velocity, and it's awesome. And a reminder that's because up there, right up there. That's all water. That's a solid wall of water, 190 meters high. That's an expression of what's happening at the bottom. That weight of water exerting that pressure turned into velocity. And you can.
Let's pray. Father in heaven, today on Pentecost Sunday, we remember that you never call where you do not equip. You never ask us to do something you don't give us the resources to do. Lord, sometimes it's hard for us to trust and to believe, especially if we don't see the circumstances but that we wish were there for all the resources or all the things we think are necessary. But Lord, if this is a process of teaching us to trust you, like Paul, who had to learn that power is made perfect in weakness, that when he was weak, then he became strong because it wasn't his power, it was yours. And that's our prayer today, Lord, that we trust you for your power. We trust you for your calling here. We trust you that in this place, your spirit is and will work. We trust you, Lord, that already you are changing lives. Already. And that there are many more lives to be changed because we're here trusting and following Jesus, our Lord. Lord, again, especially today, we pray that your Holy Spirit would fill us, all of us, fully, and that we would always keep our eyes on you, that we would believe truly the truth, that you are ever in us, that we have everything we need for life, faith and to live out your purpose for us. Lord, help us to be bold in believing your promises. Lord, this day um, we pray your continued guidance for the future of this congregation, for meetings to come. Uh, we pray that you would direct this congregation in the call process uh, and in all decisions to be taken. Uh, help us all again, to fully believe in your power here in this place, that you are at work uh, with your good and perfect and acceptable will. Lord, uh, we pray for our hurting world, both here and abroad. We pray for uh, the problems with wars and rumors of wars. We pray for uh, people who are suffering from illness and disease and other affliction. We pray, Lord, uh, for our country and the world for good leadership that would be uh, truthful, honest, upright, strong, bold, courageous, always rooted in the rule of law and uh, the idea of service toward you and toward others, recognizing always humbly that you are God and you are to be obeyed and follow in all things. Lord, we pray for uh, Maria for continued guidance and blessings in her, uh, in her life. Lord, we pray for healing for those who need it, uh, including Dottie, Craig, Julie, Mary Ann, Jean, uh, Steve, Mary, Carol, Ray, Bob, Barb, Jerry, Joan, Isaiah, Griffin, Katie, and Kelly. And now, Lord, we ask you to prepare our hearts to receive the sacrament, Christ's body and blood and bread and wine in faith, trusting again in your Holy Spirit power uh, to work through these means of grace. And we sum up all of our prayers in our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to the temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And we join together with our community song. <laughs> Thank you. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take me, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Also be with you. I invite you to come forward to the Lord's side. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Take and eat. Now may this true body and true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, keep and preserve you steadfast in the true faith and the life of Christ. Depart from this. Thank you. 
Redeeming Life Ministry. This is our last Sunday that we'll be collecting donations for them. We'll have a new mission for next month. Um, it'll actually be the Bible sticks for the military, so we'll be doing that next month. Um, just a reminder, the office is closed tomorrow. Miss Bev does get a day off <laughs> to enjoy Memorial Day, so um, if you need anything, you know, obviously you can reach out to Pastor Lee, myself, if, you know, if something comes up. But just a reminder, the office will not be open tomorrow. Um, we will be having a congregation meeting June 11th. We are asking for as many people in person to please be here. It's a very important meeting. Um, obviously, if you can't be here, we will have an online link for people. But it's nicer to have people in person. Please come with questions or be able to, you know, if you have a question, please speak up at these meetings. Um, we will be talking about some council information, and we will also have a transition team update for you as well with the pastor that we're talk talking to right now. Um, VBS, of course, is the end of July, the 24th through the 28th. We have 44 kids registered so far for VBS with a few volunteers. So we're excited for BDS. Um, June 7th, it's a Wednesday. I'm blanking on the time now because I didn't write it down. 7 p.m. Gre it's her name, Greta? Gretel Hansen. Gretel Hansen. They will be having a musical here. Um, it's Broadway music. There's seven and 18 year olds that will be 
Oh, okay. Okay, seven through 18 year olds will be performing some Broadway musical songs. So everybody is welcome to come and join. I do have it posted on our website and Facebook, and I've even put it in a few of the family groups that I'm in. Um, so come out and support them. And then preschool, we do have five registered. Unfortunately, we had six, but one's moving to Texas. Um, but we have a sixth coming in February. But as Pastor Lee had mentioned, uh, we did. I did ask families if they'd like to provide any testimonials that I would put it on Facebook in our brochures and things like that. So I do have two to read. Um, the first one says, my son had an incredible year of preschool at Living Word. He made friends, learned, and had unforgettable moments. He started the year unsure what to expect, and I could hardly be believe the transformation that took place. He came out of his shell, grew in confidence, and loved going to school each week. The teacher was intentional, caring, and so good at working with the students. I enjoyed the programs and hearing all about he, what he was doing and learning. I'm so happy my son went to Living Word Preschool. And then the other one, pull that up, um, said, it said to me, Diana, but I'll take that out when I put the thing. But Diana, we can't thank you enough for all you have done this year. My daughter absolutely loved going to school each and every day. The mater material she learned from this year far exceeded our expectations, and we are thrilled to see the progress she made since she started in October. Thank you so much for all you do. We all look forward to school in the fall. So. Um, very happy. I mean, a few cards even said that they I created a safe environment. So, <laughs> you know, we're very, very pleased with our preschoolers and their testimonials. And, and we need to give thanks uh, to the Lord for Diana's presence and work. And like Pastor said, it's not me, it's the Holy Spirit working through me. So <laughs> I appreciate that, and I'm glad he opened up my eyes to my new talents. So <laughs> um, with that, I don't have any other announcements, so please wave to the camera. There's some goodies in the back, and thank you for those um, for the fellowship last week, too, with the preschool families. I know they really enjoyed that. So, All right. Have a, yes, have a good Memorial Day. Mm -hmm.